Yes. Yay! Yay. Yes, artists that have like fully made it, like the mm -hmm. you know the the artistic director of, of this theater or, mm -hmm. or this awesome person who's gone to Hollywood with this amazing film, and just the thought of, of coming in as, as someone along yeah. the way, do, doing everything we can to, to make it. And uh, it's what been seven years since we graduated. And, yeah. Um, Who's uh, me. Yeah, it'd be interesting for your, for you, like just a couple faculty yeah. we have as well, like for, for you guys to see a little bit of how your uh, influence mm -hmm. kind of goes in motion. You know, like your teachings over the course of a few years to mm -hmm. us, and then we've literally taken those teachings and applied them to the real world. Things we wanted to promote to uh, students at Brock, the connections you you make here at Brock, mm -hmm. if you put the effort in and, and you frame it that way, can can be more important than anything else uh, mm -hmm. after you, you graduate. It's one of the things we all learn is the, the importance of networking. And they always mm -hmm. say it's all about who you know in the industry. It's about who you know in any industry, no matter what, whether you're a plumber or an actor. And you have a plethora of, of talent around you, both in your professors, but also in your peers. Yeah. And one of the other things we wanted to talk about was we rarely interacted through in the theater program. I'm assuming Yes. Yeah. Um, we, we rarely interacted with the film students uh, at Brock. They were there, and they were always there, and they, they do 24-hour film festivals, mm -hmm. and they do this and that. And there were, there were, we, had, we made a few friends in, in the mm -hmm. film department, but not a ton. And what I wish I did mm -hmm. back then was, was meet as many of those people as possible, because at the time, you're, you're, you're so much invested in, in theater, and, and I do prefer theater mm -hmm. over film, but at the end of the day, there's there's more film to go around, and there, mm -hmm. there's more parts, and there's so much more money uh, in film. And if, if you want to be an actor, commercial acting is, is something you're going to have to look into, like just straight up, almost. You, there, I know plenty of people that love theater, and they have no interest in film, and that, that's great. But again, the, when you see a friend who is like, well, I made six grand doing one day of commercial work. It's hard to ignore. Luckily, we, we met Danny, who had his whole life he had been making films, and he knew that world. We know our acting world. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage you to, if not the film students, you're the theater mm -hmm. students around you, but connect, 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 and then and get them on Facebook, Instagram, and continue that relationship, because if you do it that way, everybody's success is your success. Yeah, I mean, your success is everybody else's. You can't put some starting relationships on a good foundation mm -hmm. and not burning bridges, really. Just not giving any reason for anybody not to want to collaborate with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that in, you know, 18 months to five years when your name comes up, they're like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, maybe they don't think anything of you, mm -hmm. but there's nothing negative there. Right. So either way, it's, yeah, it's a win. So even your, even your um, professors are, are good uh, for that, too. Like, I was thinking about my second year, I was in the main stage here, and the, the person who designed my costume, I didn't take any of her classes, but years later I connected with her, and then I was in one of her shows. So it's just, even mm -hmm. your professors are, are your... I mean, touchy subject, because it, 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 it's, it's the easiest thing in the world to offend someone, and now your career is on the line. I think it's the best kind of acting there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you see a stage production, they really have to go there. Mm -hmm. um, I drive them crazy because I have to pinpoint particular moments, and I have to kind of mm -hmm. hold it down into a particular just five seconds, and I might make them do that 50 times, but that's just what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely drawn towards that kind of acting, mm -hmm. as opposed to film films. Yeah, I was astonished when I started in that studio, how many actors came from a non-theater background. Mm -hmm. You were a child actor. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I had those kind of things to fall and back And you turned out all right. They're not all crazy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Then there's me in the middle, which is like the most vulnerable little human, who's just like, yeah. <laughs> I had no film experience, this was my first. And then I did, got asked to do one afterwards, which was really nice, because I learned mm -hmm. a lot doing this. It's a snowball. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, Danny was great. Uh, he helped, because uh, all three of us having theater backgrounds, he was very uh, meticulous mm -hmm. and patient and specific in terms of direction. You saw him the behind the scenes when you were yeah. just telling Mike, just here, just right here with the, the, like the big moment mm -hmm. of mine, and I, like, I had to stay in character the whole time. And it's, you need to look at this point in the room and then that point in the room every time yeah. and that was like that's not it doesn't have to be that specific mm -hmm. in theater it was rebecca's first movie mm -hmm. like first acting for a on screen and in my opinion she, yeah. she just absolutely crushed it so um you know that that's both i think in, in tandem your acting ability but also danny's ability to direct someone mm -hmm. for the camera 
uh, because a lot of Rebecca's scenes, first scenes, were at the door. So it's not like yeah. you're just getting warmed up to film mm -hmm. acting. It's, here's the camera, look right into it and speak to it. And yeah. don't say any words, so mm -hmm. you have to be saying everything with your eyes. Yeah. And it's like, that's, it was kind of a lot. Mm -hmm. to and then when you add Michael to it, and then I just cry every time, I'm just like. Yeah. <laughs> He allowed us to improv a lot. And a lot of the improv made it into the final cut, and so that resulted in a lot of laughs. And I like to, the first scene I generally like to shoot is one that sets a tone for everything else, because mm. it's, as the writer, I'm coming into it one way. The actors, regardless of what I say to them, are coming into it another way. Mm. And ultimately, in that moment when you arrive behind the camera and you capture that first moment, it's, it's kind of a surprise to even yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might have had the idea in your head for so long, um, so I like to kind of set that tone. It, it's like it's like the first handshake. Mm. Uh, the messiest scene is yeah. usually the last scene, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we we filmed it over a long period of time because it was a it was, it was a passion project, and, mm. and we didn't have a big studio behind us giving us money or utilizing the facilities that Brock has. Make sure you mm -hmm. use them while you got them. Uh, <laughs> I went to Bahamas, and so there's scenes where like I'm much more tan. Ah. Then I am in other scenes, and, and I remember hearing Danny and, and Maria, our, our producer, who's on with the Maid tonight, uh, they're talking about like, we're struggling with like, the color correction on this one scene. I'm like, it's not the color correction, my skin is darker. And so you, that's it's something you just got to deal with. You never, if you're approaching film in any kind of filmmaking capacity, you never want to just have one project. As mm -hmm. So it was, there was no need necessarily to speed up and kind of try and condense and force the scenes and shoot like over the course of the weekend because um, I was writing a feature at the time and it was also a case of you don't want to be someone who brings a short film to a festival and somebody walks up to you who could be the person who changes the, mm. uh, your, the course of your life and have and have them ask you that was great what are you working on and you just have an idea they've already moved on yeah everybody's got an idea nobody cares but if they come up to you mm -hmm. I have a script I'll send it to you tomorrow it just changes everything so mm -hmm. always have something current but always have something mm -hmm. that's right there as well, the next thing. Better and better and better, we realized this is the thing we need to submit right now. Mm -hmm. And seven mm -hmm. festivals later, one award later, like it's, it's yeah. that Aim High is now the vehicle to help us mm -hmm. uh, use it as a calling card for the next project, yeah. which which is happening yeah. right now. And it's, it's a very exciting time. We yeah. have the hard work. The music choices. They, they have to be there. Like, like I wrote some of those particular pieces of music and it's just, it's kind of a hard end in this one, right? It, it, it has to be worth Mm -hmm. Like what I'm the soundtrack of what I'm hearing, and I, I'm really drawn to music from the '50s, and it's just so underused, mm -hmm. but it's also very yeah. expensive. I think we're all proud of, of how well it turned out for how little money it cost, but it still costs a good chunk of money to make anything. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. anyway. if you're really meant to do it, you gotta be a little crazy to to mm -hmm. craft. Yeah, and education. Right? Right. Suddenly, you don't know where to soundboard. It's like, oh, can you come do our show, and then yeah. you know, yeah, then you're there, and then you're meeting. <laughs> the, yeah, every, been, yeah. Yeah. every production mm -hmm. you're in is. is Chance to meet more people, and then six months later they're doing a show, yeah. and then that great mm -hmm. interaction you you guys had. Don't remember that, and then you know that's when you come. Oh, I'm actually a performer too, and they're like, well, okay, come up for this role or something. Yeah. If you're good with social media, like it's it's a skill that can actually tangibly help any art production, whether it's a film or or, or theater. So just think of your skill sets and, and be strategic on how you can make those strengths, whatever they are, work for whatever it is you want. And you're constantly figuring out what your priorities are when. Um, if you end up not liking the show that you're in, can you say no in the middle of the production and quit? Mm -hmm. Definitely not if it's a if it's paid. Probably definitely not even if it's not paid because they're going to remember that and you're going to shoot yourself in the foot of ever working with any, not just them but anyone they know. And so you're shackled into this thing, right? So you need to learn that lesson of, of your own time commitment and your ability. Have you had some space that we had? dental floss on the lamp that kind of dragged the lamp across the wall and then there was wax and a book and when we come up on the bullet gorilla the frame, filmmaking that's <laughs> when you basically come up on the bullet the bullet is a fraction ahead of the frame so the bullet was already wedged into the candle wax and then I had someone on headset which was the producer and we kind of we like rented out like police lights and I throw them on top of the car <laughs> and basically ah. as we, we rented so as we got to that as the camera works there the, the sound of the bullet just beats the image getting to the bullet, so the impression of the bullet hitting, yeah. and then yeah. it was just getting her to like pull into the frame simultaneously. Yeah. 
it took, we actually got it pretty quick. I, I, we set up for it to go all night, and we got that, it was on tape later, I think. A uh, light set up on the top of the car, like a big, heavy thing, and we were balancing, we didn't, we didn't rent the kit to actually affix it to a car, so the plan originally was to just <laughs> place it on there and it's like just stop very, very slowly. It's because it's out of focus. Like yeah. the place yeah. lights, what, if it were in focus, you would actually see Maria half out the window holding it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it's the project you write, the project you shoot, and the project you edit, they're all mm -hmm. different. Yeah. And so I think the creative, the, the creative aspect in me likes the editing because then you have kind of this control of this puppet master work of, of mm -hmm. piecing things around.